Well, this won't be a controversial video at all. <laughs> uh. Many people would describe Thomas as escapism. If you ever feel depressed or angry at the world, I think Thomas is like an escape from all that, where you don't have to worry about the real life things like drama or politics. It's definitely a comfort show. However, that doesn't mean political topics haven't been touched upon in the show before. For the most part, Thomas is a pretty apolitical show. However, political topics have come up before, such as the three big engines forming a workers union, and then there's the whole concept of diesels replacing steam engines, the way diesels talk about being revolutionary. We are revolutionary. Oh. For the most part, the show is pretty apolitical, but that doesn't mean politics haven't been a factor in some episodes. So, I thought it would be fun to go through the characters of Thomas and break down what their political ideologies would be, just based solely on their characters and how they act in the books and show. I'll be focusing mainly on the main characters, as while I'd love to go through every character in the franchise, most Thomas characters are pretty apolitical. While I'd love to dissect the political ideologies of a character like Flora, there really isn't all that much to her. <laughs> so, before we begin, I just want to set down a few ground rules. One. This is not a political video. Despite politics being in the thumbnail and political subjects featuring very heavily throughout the video, this isn't a video where I endorse any particular party. Honestly, this is more of a character study about how the engines themselves would vote. If you want to talk about the engine politics, that's fine, but please, just keep your own politics out of this. 2. Bias while I tried to be as unbiased as I could be, since all the engines exist in a free market society in the 1960s, there will be a lot of bias in their political ideologies, but I still tried to keep it as balanced as I reasonably could. And finally, number three, keep it civil. I'm perfectly fine with people having disagreements on what political opinions they think a fictional train would have, and by all means, debate that. But if I see anyone promoting violence or genocide, or if I see anyone threatening to <clears throat> unalive people just because they have a different political opinion, that sort of rhetoric will not be tolerated. I'm fine with people disagreeing, but just keep it constructive, keep it civil, and keep it on topic. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's get started with the man himself, Thomas. To me, Thomas is definitely an anarchist. An anarchist is a person who constantly questions the authority of the society in which he lives, and I think that pretty much fits Thomas to a T. He's always very skeptical of authority. He's constantly rude to Gordon, who is essentially the embodiment of tradition. I think there's also a hint of libertarianism with Thomas as well, with the way he hates being driven around by a driver and thinks he can do it all by himself, or the way he doesn't like being told to wear a snowplow. Libertarians also don't like governments telling them what to do, so I think Thomas is somewhat libertarian in nature. But I think what pushes Thomas from libertarianism to anarchism is the way he handles challenging the authority. Because Thomas isn't very constructive when it comes to challenging people. He's much more likely to just tell them that they're all idiots without actually explaining why. You don't know what I suffer, moaned Henry. Rubbish, said Thomas. You're too fat, you need exercise. There's a significant lack of empathy with Thomas. You know, he's very quick to challenge the bureaucracy of society, or he's very quick to challenge the pointless hierarchies. You could view Thomas running his branch line as analogous to private enterprise. And with the government threatening to shut Thomas's branch line down, you could definitely see how you get very anti-government sentiments. I don't really see Thomas as a left-wing or a right-wing character. He just seems very anti-authority. So no matter what authority you give Thomas, much like an anarchist, he will still rebel against it. But despite Thomas's anti-government sentiments, or his libertarian stance, or his all-round anarchistic nature, he is still, ironically enough, a monarchist, which makes Thomas's political opinions all the more interesting. Edward. Now, Edward is a very difficult character to find a political opinion of, because Edward is inherently a character who plays his cards close to his chest. He's a very conflict-avoidant character, and as a consequence makes very conscious decisions to not talk about things, like politics. But just because Edward chooses not to talk about politics doesn't mean he doesn't have political opinions. So. Let's find out what they are. Firstly, when the three big engines start a workers' reunion and go on strike, you'll notice that Edward is the only one who continues to work for the railway. He even gets the nickname Black Wheels. They say tender engines don't shunt, and last night they said I have black wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? 
No, Edward, you have nice blue ones and I'm proud of you. Which, of course, is analogous to the term blackleg, which is a British term for men who work during a strike. From Edward's actions, we can interpret that he isn't the biggest fan of workers' unions, which is... Interesting. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say that Edward is somewhat conservative in nature, since he's so old, you know. Edward is very much the embodiment of older things still being useful in modern day, like how he saves Trevor from the scrapyard, or how he saves the Fat Controller's old PA system. Edward really is the embodiment of the phrase, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. He's also very conservative in the way he puts his family first. He's very much a family man. But what I love most about Edward is that he doesn't let his somewhat conservatism define him. Like, despite him and Boko being completely different engines from completely different eras, that doesn't stop him from being best friends with him. So, despite being conservative, I still think he's very open-minded. And I think that's why a lot of people like Edward, because he's very apolitical in a lot of ways. He's not like Thomas or Gordon, where they'll spout off about some hot take political opinions they have. No. In terms of political opinions, Edward is the type who will never tell you who he voted for. He's very secretive about his own views, and is much more about keeping the peace rather than starting an argument. Henry. So, the odd thing about Henry is that I have two answers for his political views. The first is for the Railway series portrayal, and the other is for the TV series. In the Railway series, I would say Henry is fairly conservative and close-minded in nature. He doesn't think tender ensigns should shunt. He's very similar to Gordon in a lot of ways, in that he'll essentially do or say whatever he does. However, TV series Henry is quite different. Henry has this undying love for trees and nature. He loves the forest and the greenery, and in the new series, he often visits the wishing tree. In the TV series, Henry is essentially one of those new age hippies and I love that. I think Henry would really be in favour of government spending on protecting the environment. He'd very much be in favour of government organisations like the EPA for example. Save the bees, save the trees, save the whales, save those snails. Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails. With the amount of sickness that Henry has also suffered throughout the show, I imagine Henry would have gotten himself into a lot of financial debt. So I feel like he'd really be in favour of government spending on health programmes too, for example. So in terms of politics, I'd say Henry would actually be pretty liberal. Gordon. I think out of all the political perspectives in the show, this is the one who most people will agree with. And it's that Gordon is a conservative. In English terms, that's a Tory. In American terms, that's a Republican. Gordon believes very strongly in tradition. He believes that each engine has his own role in society, and to break that role is outrageous in Gordon's eyes. Gordon is often stuck in his own traditional ways, be it domeless engines not being proper, or not whistling correctly, or having to shunt trains like common tank engines. Gordon is all about things being done the proper way. Although he did manage to arrange a workers' union with the other big engines, so perhaps Gordon is a little more liberally minded than he cares to admit. <laughs> but I think that had less to do with workers' rights and more to do with the tender engines just not wanting to feel like tank engines. But I digress. James. James's character is all about free expression. He's not afraid to tell people what's on his mind. He takes great pride in his appearance and is a very <clears throat> proud character. This has led many fans to code James as representative of LGBT people. And I kind of have to agree. There's a certain vibe that you get off James. Metaphorically speaking, James is kind of like your gay uncle. You know the one. He's in his 40s and doesn't have a wife or children. And it's kind of like an open secret in the family that he's gay, but they just don't talk about. Yeah, Des James. I think that would spill over into James's political ideology. As being very pro-gay, that would make James pretty liberal. However, we do unfortunately have to talk about James's bigotry. In the Railway series, James had a pretty strong prejudice for Diesels. It was somewhat justified in the 50s, but his prejudice with Diesels lasted well into the 80s. Although, he was eventually won over by the works Diesels, so even though James had a checkered past, I still think he would land on quite the liberal side of the spectrum. Percy. The way Percy interacts with politics is kind of like how a child would interact with politics, in that I don't think Percy would have a proper understanding of it. So I honestly don't know where to place him on a political spectrum. Although, I will say, if I were to put Percy anywhere in a political system, I do think he sort of represents the working class. Because, you know, he's the lowest status character in the society he works in, and he does all the backbreaking work and doesn't get any reward for it, other than being dumped on or being called 
Dirty. Don't call me Dirty Percy. So whatever way the working class votes, that is also the way I think Percy would vote as well. In all honesty, I think Percy would actually make a great politician. He's very much a man of the people, like how he talks to the mainland engines. Hell, even the trucks seem to like him, even though they did backstab him in the end. Toby. What I love about Toby is that I don't think he gives a single fuck about politics. He probably did care about politics in the past, but he's at the point in his life where he's just so over it. He just doesn't care about it. The true neutral, if you will. Like, the only time Toby would talk about politics is if he knew he could get a rise out of the other political characters. Like, I could totally see Gordon talking about some conservative idea, and then Toby would just say he's a communist just to piss him off. <laughs> or I could totally see James talking about some very liberal idea, and then Toby says something very conservative just to annoy James. <laughs> it's so Toby. I think Toby is the true neutral of the political spectrum, in that he's so over politics and just doesn't care about it anymore. Toby's kind of like what Edward wants to be in politics. Where Edward makes a conscious decision to be neutral on everything, Toby doesn't choose to be neutral on everything. He just is, and I love that. <laughs> Duck. Duck's political opinions are surprisingly multifaceted and complex, because on the surface level, yeah, he seems pretty conservative. The way he talks about his railway is almost like how he talks about a religion. Everything always has to come back to the Great Western Railway with him. I'm Great Western and don't we know it, Ray Rose? I think that's very similar to how religious people act, when everything always comes back to God for them. Hell, despite being on a new railway, Duck still keeps his Great Western Railway lettering and numbering. You get the sense that Duck is very close-minded about change, and that's especially true when Diesel comes to the yard. Duck is very skeptical of Diesel, and is not in favour of his ideas of revolution at all. It's very easy to write him off as a generic conservative character. However, I think there's a little more complexity to him than meets the eye. You'll see, when Duck first came to the railway, he saw how rude the big engines were being to Percy, so much so that he arranged a strike outside the shed by sitting on the points. This is very interesting characterization, because you wouldn't think of Duck to be the type to go on strike, and yet, here we are. I definitely think Duck is the type who believes in very strong authority and believes in respecting that authority. But if that authority doesn't respect him back, then Duck has no hesitation in firing back on them. So while Duck is in favour of strong authority, he's also in favour of strong, competent authority, which makes him all the more interesting. Diesel. When Diesel first came to the yard, one of the things he talked about was how revolutionary he is. We are revolutionary. Revolution is often a term associated with overthrowing free market societies. So think like the French Revolution, or the Russian Revolution, or the Cuban Revolution. All things very much associated with socialism. I think Diesel comes off to me as socialist, specifically with the way he talks about being revolutionary. I also love this idea of Duck being conservative and Diesel being socialist, because I think it adds another layer to their dynamic. Because they both have pros and they both have cons. Having Duck be conservative conservative and Diesel being socialist does make them opposites, but it also kind of makes them similar, just inverted. They're very much part of the same yin and yang, if you will. I love that. I think it's very interesting that they're both kind of right and kind of wrong at the same time. You know, it's a lot more layered and interesting. Donald and Douglas. I actually think Donald Douglas would be quite liberal. I think Donald Douglas would be very in favour of things like immigration, especially when you consider that Donald Douglas are both technically immigrants themselves. And considering that only one of the twins was meant to come, but, but they both came, I think immigration would be something that both Donald and Douglas would be favouring. And that's especially true with Oliver in Escape, when the whole story is, is about Douglas smuggling Oliver over to the refuge of Sodor. So, yeah. In terms of immigration, I think they'd be quite liberal. However, they did have quite a hatred of Diesels, so I'm not sure where they would be placed on the political spectrum. But to be fair, Donald Douglas did eventually befriend characters like Boko, Pip and Emma, so I think they are still quite liberal. They're honestly not too dissimilar to James in a lot of ways, where they're very liberal on some subjects, but very conservative on others. So <laughs> wherever James goes on the political spectrum, I think that's where Donald and Douglas would probably go too. Oliver. Oliver comes from the Great Western Railway. 
I do think he has a fairly conservative mindset, especially with how he doesn't believe Toad about the whale being on the beach, and how he needs to see it with his own eyes in order to believe it. However, I do also think he has quite a liberal mindset. Like, he does want to help the whale, and he must be in favour of immigration, as we see him get over to Sodor by Douglas. Mix that with his conservatism, I think he'd be somewhat of a soft right. Emily. I'll be honest, I think Emily was the easiest to find a political ideology for, as I feel she's the most honest about who she is. So, first and foremost, I think Emily is a monarchist, just with the way she talks about kings and queens. I'd like to be a queen, thought Emily. It's very clear that she's in favour of the monarchy. I think Emily would almost certainly be very liberally minded. She's the type who keeps asking questions like why the government isn't doing more, and she very much wants more government spending on things like public health services and saving the environment. And I'm also fairly certain that she's a feminist too. I think a lot of Emily's character is very much based in feminism, especially with her being the only female in Tidmid Sheds, but not being afraid to speak up just like the other male characters. She definitely comes off to me as a very good female politician. What I really love about Emily is that I feel like her and TV series Henry's politics is actually fairly similar. They're both in favour of larger governments, they're both in favour of spending on uh, saving the environment and helping people, so yeah, I think it's interesting that their politics kind of lines up. Diesel 10. Diesel 10 is almost certainly alt-right. In case that wasn't obvious or clear enough already, since he's actively participating in the genocide of all steam engines, how could he not be? I think he'd definitely want the government to basically genocide away all the steam engines, be a true force. I think that would place him somewhere in the authoritarian right, very much in favour of a right-wing government that sets out to destroy all steam engines. Although I'm not sure whether I should put him on the socialist end of the spectrum, since the way he treats the Diesels in the CGI series, kind of like communist fringe group, since they all tend to live on the outskirts and they all want the genocide of the steam engines, but act fairly socialist with the Diesels. Since he wants to act out genocide with the steam engines, but also acts fairly socialist with the Diesels, I'm just going to put him here on the political spectrum. Scarloe and Reneus. Scarloe and Reneus are pretty apolitical. They're just kind of old, gentle, kind characters. They're kind of like Toby in that they've lived such long lives that they don't care about politics anymore. Although, considering that they're 150 something years old, I am more inclined to say that they're more on the conservative leaning side, considering they're old, preserved steam engines on an old railway. Sir Handel. I think Sir Handel would also be very conservative, because Sir Handel thinks the whole universe revolves around him. I think his political philosophy would very much be in favour of things like individual freedoms and open markets. I think he'd be very libertarian in that he hates the idea of the government making decisions for him, and he hates the idea of taxes. I can guarantee you Sir Handel has been evading his taxes for years. <laughs> Peter Sam. On the other hand, Peter Sam is the exact opposite of Sir Handel, in that he will always pay his taxes and that he will always follow the rules and the laws of the government. Peter Sam is very nice and a very compassionate character, so unlike Sir Handel, I do think he'd be in favour of government spending on helping the needy and the less fortunate. Although at the same time, Peter Sam is also quite a gullible character, so I feel like he's the type of character who could have been very easily taken advantage of. Peter Sam could very much be used as a pawn, let's say. Rusty. I think Rusty is the definition of a liberal character. Rusty is one of the few characters in the whole franchise who has a fluid gender, so on a social level, I definitely think he's very liberal. I think his very fluid identity also applies to his character, in that he's very open to new experiences like exploring the Bluebell Railway, or travelling to the mainland, or understanding Boulder. He also helps smuggle Stepney to the island of Sodor, so yeah, an all-round little liberal diesel. Duncan. I think Duncan is just flat out a communist. Again, he's very rebellious, and rebellion is something very much associated with communism or socialism. Also, before Duncan came to Sodor, he may or may not have worked in a factory, which may have contributed to his hatred of free market societies. Duncan is the definition of a rebellion. He is constantly getting stuck in tunnels, or is on the causeway, or is on the viaduct, or is derailing or crashing. The whole concept of Duncan rocking and rolling is pretty in line with the anti-society punk rock and roll movement, which I think Duncan does admire. He's very much the type to stick it to the man, so to speak. Annie and Clarabelle. Annie and Clarabelle come off to me as conservative, but not by choice. 
Rather, because of Thomas being such a crazy anarchist, he's constantly doing crazy, wacky things. And Annie and Clarabelle are like the antidote to that, in that their conservative voices bring Thomas back down to earth. So, I won't stop at all. That's a terrible idea, Thomas. What about the other passengers? And you'll get into trouble with the Bat Controller. I suppose you're right. Thomas wants to do something crazy and wacky, and Annie and Clarabelle bring him down to reality. They're very traditional coaches and try to keep Thomas' rebellious nature in check. They're like his two aunties that want to make the right decisions for him. It's, it's kind of sweet. Toad. As Toad said himself, he likes to think of himself as having forward-thinking views. I'm always going backwards, Mr. Oliver. I have forward-thinking views. I could be a leader. So we can presume that by forward-thinking views, he means a very liberally-minded man. Or break fan. <laughs> also, with the way that Toad cares for animals, like the whale, for example, I think he'd very much be in favour of spending on animals and well-being organisations. I think Toad is the type who likes to think about the future as well. I also love this idea of Toad being the only forward-thinking brake fan, while all the other brake fans are actually quite backwards. <laughs> it actually checks out. Speaking of backwards brake fans, Bradford. In case it wasn't obvious enough, Bradford is a military guy. He's all about strong authority. He's all about compliance which would place him somewhere on the authoritarian right. He's very orderly and is very demanding of others, and he wants to get exactly what they want. So he's kind of like the opposite of Toad in a way, in that he really believes in strong right-wing authority, and he believes in more government spending on the military so that we can protect the country. That is what Bradford is. <laughs> Trucks. Well, you see, trucks are generally seen as masochists. A masochist is someone who derives pleasure from self-inflicted pain. So I don't really know what, if any, political ideology a truck would have. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say maybe socialist or communist, just based on the fact that the trucks seem to be treated as equals and none of them seem to have de facto leaders. Unless you count the leader Scruffy, but of course even communist country had leaders. But just based on the fact that all the trucks seem to be of equal value, and they all seem to share the means of production. And to finish this video, let's talk about the two hats. The Fat Controller. In case it wasn't obvious, the Fat Controller is very clearly conservative. Despite running a railway somewhere in the 1960s, he's still using very old, outdated Victorian-era steam engines on his railway. He's a very stubborn man, I'll tell you that much. Ironically, whenever he does try to modernise the railway, it always ends up backfiring horribly. Be it a foghorn, or a new diesel screwing up, or the new PA system not working. No wonder he's so adverse to change. Everything new he tries fails. <laughs> Lady Hatt. Now, unlike her husband, I think Lady Hatt is actually quite liberal. She's very interested in modernising the railway, as confirmed in that god-awful Bible. <laughs> but there is some evidence of this in the show too, like how she calls Annie and Clarabel beach huts. I do like the idea of the Fat Controller being conservative and wanting to keep the railway the way it is, while Lady Hatt is all about modernising and changing. It, there's a very nice yin yang between those two as well. So, yeah, that was the political ideologies of all the Thomas characters. Something I really appreciate about Thomas is about how truly diverse the characters are. There's nothing worse than having a TV show where all the bad characters are represented by one ideology and all the good characters represented by another because it's so boring. I think it's way more fun when you have a diversity of loads of characters who come from all different perspectives and have very different opinions on the world. I think it just leads to way more interesting stories and dynamic. That's what makes pairing up characters from Thomas so interesting. And personally speaking, I think it's one of the reasons why Thomas has lasted as long as it is. Because you see parts of yourself in James you see parts of yourself in Thomas. That's what makes Thomas' character so interesting to watch. There are, of course, many other characters that I could have touched upon but didn't mention. And hey, you know, if this video does well, maybe I might do a part two. I couldn't get around to every engine's political ideology, but hey, if this video does well and some of you give good enough suggestions for other characters, I might very well do a part two. But what do you all think? Do you think I got the ideologies for each character correct? Or do you feel I misinterpreted some of them? Please let me know. And also, let me know what random one-off character political ideologies you think there are. I would love to know some of the characters like Scruff. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Slán lát!
Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails.